So in the last example, we saw how to compute the second derivative um, in terms of x and y. In fact, it ended up only depending on y, which is a little bit interesting. Um, but we computed the second derivative using implicit differentiation for the case of a circle centered at the origin. Um, now, uh, this was a you know, reasonable amount of work for a fairly simple curve. I want to do one more example. We're not going to finish it all the way, um, but we'll at least get one more example started just to make it clear that computing the second derivative is it's usually a lot of work. All right? So how do we solve something like this? Well, we could use the quotient rule. Um, the nice thing about doing the quotient rule is that at least you've solved for y double prime. So maybe we'll do it that way. Uh, if you don't like doing the quotient rule, of course, because you're doing implicit differentiation, you do have the option of clearing the denominator, right? Multiply both sides by the denominator, and then use the product rule. That's one option. Um, but let's just kind of take the brute force approach, see what happens, try to understand why um, you probably won't be assigned too many homework problems asking you to compute the second derivative via implicit differentiation. Okay. So y double prime, well, we take the derivative of this quotient. So quotient rule says we take the derivative of the top. So we're going to get minus 2y to the 4 minus 8xy cubed times y prime, right? x times y to the fourth, right? It's a product, so I have two terms. Derivative of x is just 1. Derivative of y to the 4, 4 comes down. 4 times 2 gives me the 8. Reduce the power, y cubed, but I still have to multiply by the y prime, right? Now I multiply by the denominator. 3y squared plus 4x squared y cubed, OK? Uh, still working on the numerator, but it's not all going to fit here, so let's just kind of uh, do a little line break. Uh, now we're going to do the top. 2 minus 2xy to the 4. We multiply by the derivative of the bottom. 6y, y prime, OK? Product rule on the second term, 8xy cubed plus 12x squared, y squared, y prime. OK, and this whole thing is my numerator. I still have that denominator to put in 3y squared plus 4x squared y cubed. And we need that squared. OK, but you're still not done because you don't want to leave these y prime terms in your answer, right? You want to try to write everything just in terms of x and y. So there's still a substitution to do. We still have to come up here and say, OK, um, what do we have? Well, we could bring this minus sign out front. Um, minus 2y to the 4 plus 8xy cubed times 2 minus 2xy to the 4 over 3y squared plus 4x squared y cubed. OK, close that off. Multiply by the denominator, 3y squared plus 4x squared y cubed. Subtract. OK, now we got the second term, right? 2 minus 2xy to the 4. Okay, all right, and put that in. Now we have all of this. Again, going to be a challenge squeezing this all in, right? Um, times 6y times first derivative. All right. Don't worry if you can't follow this one. The main point of this video is to illustrate that this is, in general, not something you want to be doing too often. OK? 
okay, plus um, 12x squared y squared times one more y prime, okay, Oh boy, okay, all of that, still the denominator. Okay, so we get all that done, right? So what do you do from here? Well, from here what you're going to do, what you're probably going to do, is you're going to want to clear denominators up top. So you're going to multiply top and bottom by that denominator that we see here. So this is going to end up coming to the third power. Um, that's going to get rid of the denominator here, here, and here. You still got to expand, try to clean up, see if you can simplify, see if you get down to something that's as nice as this. It's not going to be as nice as this, right? It's going to be, it's going to be pretty ugly. Um, so I guess, I guess there are two points to make with a problem like this. One, you can do it. It's not going to be nice, but you can get it done. Um, and two, it's ugly. It's really ugly. Right? Um, in general, you can expect you know, that taking the derivative is not so bad, but if you want anything reasonable at the end, there's going to be a whole lot of algebra that you're going to have to deal with. Okay? So probably you're, you're not going to try to deal with this if you don't have to. Right? Um, the other thing you might hope for is you might hope that maybe you're at least being asked for the value of the derivative at some point and you can start plugging numbers into all of this and that's one way it might clean up. Um, but uh, I wanted to throw this up here just so you don't get the idea that second derivatives are always going to be like this circle example, right? In, generally, in general, they're going to be really messy, they're going to be a lot of work, but you're probably not going to be asked to do it too often. So. At least you have that going for you.